All right. Hello, YouTube. Ashley and Merlot here. I am still loving the hair. Um, <laughs> today I put some kind of a crazy product in it to make it purple. It's going to wash out tonight, so my boss will never know. But, you know, for the time being, I, I'm enjoying the purple. Yeah. All right, so I promised that we would start making some videos addressing your guys' questions. And I'm going to have to say one of my most frequently asked questions either on YouTube, Instagram, or out in public while Bird and I are walking around is simply, is he wearing a dress? Are those pants? Is he wearing a little vest? Well, the answer is yes. Step up. You can't step up. Step up. There we go. So he is wearing a little vest. It is a diaper harness from lightquarters.com, otherwise known as Avian Fashions. He has a few different ones to choose from. This is one of my favorites. Um, he does also have this one. I remembered the name of this one. This one is called the Monet, and I do think I got it on clearance, so I don't think you can still get this one, but oh man, I love it so much. And we also have Peacock, which I think was also on clearance, but this is one of my favorites. Now this one, funny story, I get so many people coming up to me and they say, oh my gosh, I've never seen a bird with so many colors. And I go, still haven't. Yeah. Cue the laughter track. <laughs> but yeah, this is one of my favorites, but a lot of people don't seem to understand that he is wearing something and that these are not natural colors for at least this bird. Um, these vests are super handy. So like this particular one has this extra piece of Velcro here and it's got a little, a little ring. So that's where I actually attach his leash and I got him like a toy puppy, you know, like a teacup toy poodle puppy leash. So light as a feather. I don't like this buckle. This is actually a little heavier than my old leash, but the rats ate my old leash. That was really depressing. But this little tiny, teeny tiny puppy leash clips right on there and then I can take bird anywhere that I want to go. Also, this ring is super handy because I can have a little name tag on there for him. Little, little Merlot. And I've got address and phone number and stuff on the back. Um, I have my old address <laughs> and my current phone number on the back. So I do need to address that. Um, these things are a lifesaver. I, I'm not great at training. That's not really, that takes a certain level of commitment and like stick to it that I just don't exhibit on a daily basis. Um, I certainly can get through all of like my feeding and cleaning chores and, and plenty of playing and kissing and snuggling. But then when it comes to like, okay, let's get serious. We're getting to business. We're not snuggling and kissing anymore. Let's learn how to go potty somewhere specific. No. No. For me, it's easier just to put a little vest on and that way um, if people are coming in and out of the house, I can just snap a little leash on and it's fine. Um, I live here with my fiance and I live here with a roommate and there's a lot of traffic, a lot of in and out. Um, they have a lot of friends that come over, you know, you got a lot of visitors, parents, family members. So it's nice to have him just ready to go in a harness get a leash on him and then I'm like you're fine come in come out open doors close doors whatever birds secure he's not going anywhere um and that kind of brings us around to another question people ask me do you clip his wings well I have um when he was still young and he was still learning um it was nice to kind of keep him contained in an area while he learned his house and his surroundings and he wasn't just flying off. You know, there's always introductory periods with other animals. We had to make sure that the cat wasn't going to be any kind of an issue. So we didn't want him flying into a place where she could get him. We wanted to keep him up on his isolated play stand and just away from her. Um, and so we just, you know, it was nice to be able to kind of have that level of control and to keep him in one place. Um, a lot of people will clip their bird's wings um, because they're not particularly good flyers in small spaces such as houses and apartments so they have a tendency to smash into doors and windows and things um, especially windows 
and that can be very dangerous for them. Birds' sternums are not particularly sturdy and things can break. So we wanted to make sure that at least for the first few months to a year, we kind of had a little more control over him and his environment and we just kind of got to know each other. Um, over time, and with a lot of research, I started to realize that mustache parakeets are very, very, very good flyers. Very sharp turns, precision flyers. So we didn't have to worry about him smashing into things. The only other concern we would have is if he got out and flew away, which is still a legitimate concern. Um, but I started him on the diapers as soon as I brought him home. So Merlot was a pet store baby. He was hatched in Florida and he was bought by the pet store that I worked for. So they, um, they got him in, he flew over in an airplane, they picked him up at night from the airport and took him home and they were hand feeding him. So he was a hand raised little baby bird. And they had him in a cage with a bird that was the same color as my hair and shirt. <laughs> a violent purple bird. It was some kind of a ring neck, some kind of special bird or color, or it was like ah, purple ring neck. It was gorgeous. And he was a baby mustache parakeet, which is nowhere near as handsome as this adult mustache parakeet hovering over my head right now. Um, he was, shall we say, an ugly duckling. <laughs> he needed to grow into his colors. I can feel you leaning. I know you want to kiss. I thought so. But yeah, so he was not the prettiest little bird. And he was in there with this ultraviolet phantasmal. It, it had like six different descriptors in its flippin' name. Purple bird. And no, nobody, nobody wanted him. Nobody wanted to even pay attention to him. He was invisible to them against this insane little peacock that he was caged with. So I started taking him out and I started walking around with him. And I started getting him away from that purple peacock and was showing people, look, he's actually a pretty good bird. Look how cute he is. Look at him. Oh, boop. He's pretty nice. And people were like, oh, well, yeah, he is a pretty cool bird, huh? And then I'd be like, yeah, you can't even see him when he's next to his cage mate. And they'd be like, cage mate. And then he was invisible again because they all saw the peacock. So we spent a lot of time together because people weren't interested in him. And so I'd be hanging out at our counter, ringing people up, talking to people, and this little stinker started mimicking me. Yep. He started gibbering away and imitating my voice. And all my coworkers stopped and they stared at me with real morbid expressions and they go, you realize you've ruined that bird and you have to take it home now, right? And I was like, what are you talking about? I haven't ruined it. And they're like, he loves you, so guess you just have to take him home now. Oh darn. And I was like, guys, I can't, I can't take a bird. I got rats. That's my shtick. I, I'm the rat girl. I don't, I don't do the bird thing. But I do kind of like birds and birds are pretty cool. And eventually I want to get a bird, but not right now. They didn't listen to me. To top it all off, a friend slash coworker had just lost her African gray. And it was very hard for her. I mean, it was a huge struggle, tons of medical bills back and forth. It was hard and oh and she had lost her eclectus as well so she had an eclectus named ruby jane beautiful beautiful female oh gorgeous red bird and that one had passed away suddenly and very unexpectedly so she lost both of her giant birds very close together just one after the other and she was like i just i can't i'm hurt broken i can't do the bird thing anymore and she had everything she had the cages, she had the stands, she had the toys, she had everything except for the bird and the food. And so she was like, look, you need to take this bird home. I want you to take this bird home. And I need to get these memories out of my house because every time I walk past those empty cages, I cry and I need them gone. <laughs> so you, you figure out how to come and pick up the cages, buy that bird, buy that food, and it's all yours. And I was like, Looks like I'm getting a bird. <laughs> so I knew well in advance that this little guy was coming home with me and I knew about the diaper harnesses. So that was something that, you know, I'd heard from, from other customers and, you know, there were whispers and rumors about it um, all through my pet store career. 
And so I was like, well, if I'm bringing the bird home, I'm ordering a harness. So I ordered some harnesses and they arrived maybe a few days after I brought this little stinker home. He was about three months old when he arrived at the pet store. And by the time I broke down and took him home, he was about six months old, seven months old, somewhere in there. So he was very young and it was very easy to just throw a harness on him and tell him to deal with it. We, we had some slow break-ins. Um, so if you go to Flight Quarters website, they have some great videos to show you stage by stage how to introduce the harnesses to your birds at all different stages of their life. So for older birds, it's obviously gonna take a heck of a lot longer to introduce them than with younger birds. But I started out by putting it, so they want you to pin the outfit to your clothes and then hang out with the bird. And then they will start to see the fabric, they know it's not too scary, and that it's not going to kill them. And then you start like touching them with it. And you're like, look at this, check out this cool piece of fabric. And they're like, I don't like it. And then eventually you just put them in there. At least that's what I did. I think with the um, with the older birds, they want you to like put it on the cage for a little bit. His cage is right here. You can't see it, but it's right here. But yeah, you put it on the cage for a little bit and then maybe move it inside of the cage and like just do all these things so that it's in their space and they're used to it and they know it's not going to jump out and murder them and that it's not some kind of a constrictor grabbing them and squeezing them, squeezing them, squeeze them. I love you. <laughs> Boop. He's ridiculous. Um, yeah, so long story, but got him, brought him home, had the harness, got it on him in about three weeks, I think was our, we did, we took about three weeks of slowly introducing it to him, got him in it. The first time he was like, ah, I'm dying. And then every time after that, he was like, all right, whatever. We definitely have established a routine of him growling and struggling when we put the harness on him. He is five now, and he still growls and struggles when we put it on him, but he does equal amounts of growling and struggling when we take it off of him. <laughs> he hates to put it on, he hates to take it off. He hates it. So he's like, mm. but once it's on, he's fine. Sometimes he will chew on it as sort of like a little nervous habit. So you'll see like, Hold on. See, like, there's a little piece, see that little black fuzz? There's a little black fuzz right there. That is because he picks at it. So these are all brand new. I, I very, very, very recently, like during the whole pandemic thing, bought these three new harnesses to replace his like five other ones that were finally looking worn. So these things hold up. As long as your bird doesn't, you know, just chomp through them immediately, these harnesses are phenomenal. They hold up so well. Um, he chews on them. He loves chewing on fabric. So I'm gonna go off on a tangent again. I'm sorry, here it goes. He was a hand raised baby, right? So they would wrap him in a little towel and then get a syringe of baby food and they'd stick it in his little beak and they'd feed him and he loved it. And then they would wipe wipe his little beak with a towel. During this whole shtick while he was wrapped up, he would chew on his towel. He just Yep. So he'd chew on his towel and then they would give him his food and then he'd chew on his towel while they're like cleaning their syringe and stuff and then they would come back to wipe his beak and then he'd grab the towel and he'd just chew on it for a little bit more. And then that was like his whole feeding thing. They were like, okay, it's time to feed the bird that likes to chew on towels. And now chewing on fabric is his pacifier. So when he meets people, especially new people who don't know to scream at him when he does this, he will just <laughs> hole punch right through your shoulder. Just get, not your skin, the fabric. He goes for shirts and he puts holes in shirts. So people who know him well, people who come over often, they know to wear their day off clothes and not anything that they care about because he will put holes in them. He's very good at it. Because he likes to chew on it, his little, his little pacifier, and he loves to chew on fabric. And so that's what he does to his own harness. He'll chew on them. But because it's like a little strap, it's called a little, up here. So you got this little elastic band right here, right? He can just hook his beak around it and then just kind of roll it back and forth. So it, he's not putting holes 
in a big piece of fabric like you would with this. You know, he's able to just hook himself around and then roll it around and then he's happy as a little clam. So he does not destroy these as fast as I honestly expected him to destroy them. Um, oh, another thing. So you can get these little elastic bits. So the thing that has his, um, his name tag and everything on it, it comes with their lanyard. So Flight Quarter sells these. You could use this as a leash. I don't. I like something with a longer tether so that I can hand him off to people and let him socialize. This has become the lanyard that goes on my keys. So this is for my work keys. But you have that option. So you can just get everything right from them. I recommend buying one of these because it comes with the Velcro strip with the ring. And that is super handy because you can attach anything to that. You just tear this strip off, put it on your next harness. You don't have to buy one for every harness. That's silly. And these harnesses come in all different sizes, all the way from your biggest cockatoo to your tiniest little lovebird. We had a rescued lovebird for a little bit. Um, he was a health crisis nightmare. We took him in as a, a favor to one of my former bosses at one of my, one of the several pet stores I've worked at. Um, he was born without, like he had like nubs for toes, like he just, it went to the first knuckle and stopped so he couldn't perch very well and his wings were kind of short so he couldn't get any lift. I mean he was a mess and his beak had something wrong with it. We never did quite figure out what that was but it was like, it was bad. So we, we took him back and forth with the vet. We tried to work with him as best we could, gave him a good little life for as long as we could, but he did eventually pass away. And that was very, very hard because my partner was very, 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 very attached to our little, uh, was it Lu Lutino? Lucy, he was yellow. He was yellow with red eyes and a cute little orange beak. Cutest little love bird. His name was Herman. Um, but yeah. That was his little outfit. He was so tiny. I mean, I'm t oh, he had so many health problems and he was a fraction of the size that a lovebird should have been. He was so small and so cute and he would, he was scared of us, but we would hold him anyway. And he would go beep, 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 and it was the cutest. Ugh, I miss that little bean so bad. Oh, another thing. So the harnesses. I could talk about these all day because I love these things. So you just, you have like this little extra flap of cloth right here, which doesn't really do anything if they're pottying in this. I mean, it's gonna get wet real fast. So what I do is I take women's panty liners and I cut them up, cut them into thirds. You know, even the middle works. You know, it's all, it all works. Peel off the back, stick that right in there. So we just, can't really show it, but I just set it and then roll it, stuff it. And then you have this nice liner in there that is waterproof and it is not going to let any of the potties through. And then when he needs diapy change, I just tear that out, throw it away, put in a new one and he's good to go. So, so easy. Really, really, really good for keeping everybody dry. And because he has the diaper harness, a lot of stores that don't deal with food, so like the hardware store, the pet store, uh, gardening stores, all the places that I go that are not food stores, um, it's hard for me to remember the list because I haven't gone anywhere that isn't work or the food store <laughs> in like six months. <laughs> But yes, when, when these things were possible, such as going to get my hair done, right? Right? Because I did that. I took the bird. Um, the diaper gets him admittance in places that otherwise would have had a problem with him. Because they're like, oh, well, if he's strapped to your shoulder and he can't go potty anywhere, well, that's cool, I guess. Yeah. All right. Is he nice? Can I pet him? Of course he's nice. Of course you can pet him. I hope you don't mind him jumping on your shoulder because he's gonna. <laughs> yeah. So that's our harnesses. I think I've covered all of the things I wanted to say. 
Um, you now know his entire origin, how we met and fell in love, uh, where he came from. Are you gonna kiss my weird hair? Is that what you thought you were gonna do? And then it freaked you out? He's like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on with all of this hair, man. This is weird. Um, but yeah, so you know our origin story now. You've seen the awesome harnesses. I will absolutely and unquestionably leave the flight quarters link in. Let's not go there. Hey, that's not. Let's not go there. Come. Get down. Get down. Hold on. Nope. There we go. It's better now. I just don't like you over there. They're scared of you. More scared of you than you are of them, but. I just don't like it. It don't, it don't feel right. Boop. Yep. Anyway, so I will absolutely, unquestionably, uh, leave the link in the description. I think I said bio because I've been doing too much Instagram lately. But yes, I will leave the link to Flight Quarters in the description of this video. And of course I will be announcing this out on Instagram because I'm shameless like that and I like to make video announcements because then you guys can find them. Uh, definitely make sure to like and subscribe. Definitely leave me comments. That is why I came up with this video because people left me comments and asked, what's that thing he's wearing? So the more you ask, the more inspiration I will have to talk about more things related to animals. Anything, anything. It could be about birds. It could be about rats. It could be about my cat. She's floating around here somewhere outside of that door though because she disrupts everything. Everyone's scared of her. Even my roommates. Everyone who lives here except for me is scared of the cat. As they should be. Um, yeah, I mean, I've worked in pet stores a lot. So I certainly don't have any kind of degree in animals. But I have experience. And I've dealt with a lot of animal things in my years in the animal world. So I probably have answers for things that I don't even own. Like I could talk about guinea pigs a bit. I could talk about rabbits a bit. I could talk about some reptiles. But I'm probably going to refer to one of my friends get information from him before I answer those questions. Um, I do have a friend who is a licensed professional breeder and he sells to retailers. So he's a wholesaler of reptiles. So I can get questions answered from him and pass the info on to all of you. Um, so please ask me questions. I love this stuff. This is what I do. I love to talk and I love it when it's about animals. So definitely drop me comments. Definitely like and subscribe and definitely follow us on Instagram at Merlot and family and we would be very 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 grateful for that. Also let me know what color I should buy next for my hair. This stuff's fun. It's just it's a goo that I put in. Goo it up. Blow dry it. Poof. Color. Wash it out tonight. Boss doesn't know. Buy a different color. Do it again on my next day off. Rebel! Sorry, who did I scare? That was probably Maisie. I scared someone. <laughs> okay, I've had too much coffee now. And I'm getting too into talking. And this video is too long. So I will see you guys next time. Alright, this time I'm actually going to end the video. I just saw Maisie run up a thing. That was cute. Alright, bye guys!